The script's utilization of characters of color as conduits for brutality needed to be explored further. Do you have something to tell me, Deadline? Civil War, a topic that appeals to a certain subset of Americans, and a movie that appeals to a certain subset of Americans. Seriously, these reviews are insane not just because they're singing their praises as high as physically possible, but because they're doing it for seemingly one reason. Civil War plays like a nightmare, but you should still see it. The most expensive movie to date is borderline incoherent but that doesn't mean it's not important. The year is unspecified. It could be a few years into some alternate future, or it could be right now. Civil War, we have met the enemy, and it's us. Again. Get the feeling the person that wrote that, not a huge fan of humanity. Or maybe just themselves, it's difficult to tell. Are you taking the piss? And then Rolling Stone hits it out the park, America's worst case scenario is right around the corner. Ordinary citizens take up arms against one another. No, it's not a documentary. Yet. You get the feeling that while these people were watching the movie, they were incredibly unhappy. That it wasn't actually happening. They've never been more miserable than when they found out that the movie didn't actually just start blaming actual Americans for the fictional problems. And I mean that completely seriously, they admit it. Because over on Rotten Tomatoes we get the reviews, and as you can see, it scored an 86% from the critics. A lot of them liked it. What's mostly interesting though is the reasons why some of them didn't. Because if you look at what they say, they're often not complaining about things like the characters. Even though a lot of the reviews say they're incredibly weak in this. Now this has a lot of similarities to to the American society and the fact that they go, yeah, it does send a message. Doesn't go far enough though, does it? It's, it, it's not blunt enough for me. If only we could have attacked half the population, that's what I really would have wanted. That's how you get things like, it can be admired for its desire to warn us about the potential cost of escalating tensions in this country. But although it may be viscerally intense, it's intellectually timid and dramatically thin. Civil War's skittishness towards real world illusion might be more tolerable if still frustrating, because that's why they wanted to go and see the movie. I just wanted to go and see Americans called scum, which although based generally doesn't sell many tickets. But I was making a number of kind of crass generalizations about Americans though, I don't really believe any of them. Uh, and I, I did it for comic effect. What I really wanted was real world illusion. A spineless dystopian action drama. And why is it spineless? Well, it defaults to a dangerous, irresponsible, both sideism. This is a movie that isn't coming out and just taking one side. This is dangerous, both side. What the hell is both sideism? Can we stop sitting in our bedrooms trying to come up with pseudo intellectual words to make our five IQ seem like 10? Please. Seriously, Mary Ann, why have you got two names? Pick one. That was a bit petty. Yes, yeah, so's the review. <laughs> it's pretense of objectivity. Kind of spat that one through her teeth, didn't she? To the journalist protagonists, the film thinks it's championing one out of five because it wouldn't come out and just go, oh, it's the Texans' fault. I wonder if she still would have given it a one out of five had it blamed the Californians. I, I, I'd, I'd love to know. The bottom line is it's poorly researched because the film feels inaccurate to America. It's not meant to be accurate to America. It's meant to be a fictional reality. I've just realized who this was written by. Grace Randolph. <laughs> Why is this fantasy universe nothing like mine? I don't understand. Do you think she walks into Walmart and wonders where all the Iron Man suits are? You stupid woman with your weird child. The film is not just wildly irresponsible, but also not well made. You notice which one was the biggest problem there? Which one came first? It's wildly irresponsible. Someone else called it dangerous. Yeah, I mean, it's not a well made film. Sounds like the bit of movie criticism that should be upfront. Civil War feels a lot like a guy in the office that likes to complain about politics, but doesn't vote. Yes, you seem to have noticed that there might be problems in America, but you're not willing to call those people evil that I don't like. <laughs> I have a feeling that's another guy who would call him spineless. We get an actual review from Deadline, though. The film's execution, hampered by thin characterization, a lackluster narrative, and an over-reliance on spectacle over substance, left me disengaged. For once, we get a critique of the film rather than, why isn't this thing attacking the people I don't like? And that's just for the ones that even attempted to understand it. Because there are those people out there generally the ones that can't abstract, that, that can't just watch a movie and enjoy it. No, they have to be told how to feel about the movie. For instance, Civil War feels like food for thought on the surface, yet you're never quite sure what you're tasting. Or why, exactly? I mean, call me crazy, David, but generally you go to the cinema to be entertained. Oh, uh, why am I watching this movie? I don't know. Can, can somebody tell me? It wasn't enough for him that he went to a movie and watched something play out, 
He needed the movie to spell it out. Who are the guys that I'm supposed to dislike? Could you make it more like the real world so that I definitely know which side I'm not on? Thank you. It's not enough to just give them information. They have to be given the emotional outlay with it so that they can go forth and spread that opinion. Like, there's already some prearranged, ordained idea that they're supposed to have, and they would just like you to make it easy for them, please. Like, their two brain cells are already knackered from the last time they had to rub themselves together to make a spark. What, what I care about is the, the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. That's why one of my favorite terms from the reviews is Civil War is a Rorschach test designed for maximum impact across ideologies. Essentially, it just gave you information and you can read into it what you would like to read into it. You'd project your thoughts and opinions onto the movie and interpret it through that, which really says a lot for Rolling Stone, where he, uh, well, he didn't have any, did he? One thing Garland's at times frustratingly opaque script does go out of its way to clarify is that the ideological fissures in this alternate version of America occur along a very different fault than the one that remain from the country's actual civil war. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but the only way I can interpret this really poorly put together sentence is that because he said about the alternate version of America from the actual civil war, by actual civil war he means the real world. I mean I can understand some of them going, oh it'd be different if that was actually happening here. He thinks it already is. He's literally looking at it, almost apocalyptic wasteland of a war, and then going, that's just like outside my window. Window. I don't know, maybe he lives in New York, I'm not sure. There's street violence and general social disorder. A dystopia with highways chocked full of cars, most of the population in hiding, the internet all but non-functional, and it sometimes plays like a mashup of 28 days later. Well, all I'm saying, sounds like New York to me. <laughs> At least what I've seen on YouTube videos anyway. How does the filmmaker feel about the protagonist's sometimes dubious choices? You see what I mean about how they have to be told how to feel, have to be told how to interpret it. They can't just watch a movie and make up their own mind. No, what did you intend by this? I need to be told so I can also have that opinion. Please, sir, can you tell me how to think? <laughs> There's a theme here, by the way. A little bit. The movie aims to hold a mirror up to societal spiraling out of control. In a time when flipping through the news or scrolling through social media can feel like peering into a dystopia. It's really strange when the ones causing the dystopia are going, I can't believe the world got like this. <laughs> How could this possibly have happened? However, despite its ambitious premise and high caliber cast, the movie stands as a modded reflection, alternately rendering its cautionary tale less impactful than intended. If only the movie had told us to hate the correct people. Instead, because it tried to remain neutral, well, I mean, that's just modded. What's the point? You can understand why every movie out of Hollywood comes out so biased, because if the critics think that, the people in Hollywood definitely do as well. Feel it's almost an obligation to take a side. Coming out with a movie which is seemingly trying to be neutral is genuinely surprising. And that's the strange thing about the reviews. They absolutely adore the setting and the premise. They don't talk too much about what we'd normally critique about a movie, which is weird when there seems like there's a lot of problems with it, just in Inherently. As one brings up, even on the level of plot logic, the movie poses a question that the script's curiously thin world building never answers. If the internet and most of the nation's industrial infrastructure are in ruins, how are ordinary people reading the journalist articles to begin with and looking at the photos that he spends hours struggling to upload? When we've already heard previously, the internet barely exists in this country anymore. I mean, if the point of the movie is to show you that journalists are entirely pointless and no one cares, well, I agree. <laughs> like I say, the movie seems like a raw test. What kind of an American are you, Plemons asks, in the movie's scariest and most successful sequence. Not for nothing, it's also the moment that suggests the most strongly that this vaguely defined concept in this fictive America has everything to do with race. It's almost like you can hear the noise of a million people spontaneously face palming. Uh, that's gaslighting. That's what it is. Because I don't know if that's true, but if it is, it's really stupid, isn't it? What kind of an American are you? All I'm saying is if it is about race, shouldn't you be able to tell? You wouldn't have to ask the question, you'd just be able to look at the people. I know we had sunglasses on, but come on, mate, if it's damaged your eyesight that much, take them off. In fact, if that was true, it would be so stupid. I actually think that's wrong. <laughs> I've not seen the movie as of yet. I can't see how that's true. That may be the screenplay's smartest single line. Really doesn't give me a lot of hope for the rest of it, 
be honest. In that it dispenses with the metaphorical quality of Civil War's imagined political dystopia and presents us with a real question that many Americans are asking each other and themselves right now. That's why he thinks it's the best line. I tell you, this is like walking into their office and rather than typing on their keyboard, they're just smearing their own excrement over the walls. Don't worry, I'll get down to the article later. I'm just looking for inspiration. It's the Rorschach test. That's why he thought it was like that. This is the real question we needed to know. Finally, he's got rid of the unbiased and shown us that actually the people I hate are evil. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to have sex with my brother. Cut. Thank you. Civil War leaves the audience feeling trapped in an all too realistic waking nightmare. Again, if as you're driving down the road, you get shot at and see dead bodies on the side of the pavement, have you ever considered moving out of California? Look, if there's 50 states I've offended too, I think I could probably get to the rest if I try. It just seems weird to me. It seems like people are liking the movie because of what they think it says, rather than what it's actually saying. Like I've said before, one of the reasons you can like a movie is because it reflects your own values. Well, if you come out of a movie where everyone's projects their own values onto it, is it any surprise that they're all, this is amazing, it's so emotional, Oh, it sums me right up. Because that's what you get in some of the reviews. A riveting, brutal, heart-stopping look at the ravages of war. Set in the modern day, or the near future, Garland's cinematic distress signal doesn't just feel familiar. It feels inevitable. It's impressive, invigorating filmmaking. Hard to hold in the emotions when watching this. We distract ourselves when it comes to our atmosphere, but I'm grateful that some people will talk about it. His cinema is important to our times. Bracing, yet frustrating timid because it doesn't go far enough. It's a cautionary tale. Mourning again, M-O-U-R, uh, in America, it's mesmerizingly, horribly gripping. It's the sheer plausibility of the premise, the sense that something like this really could happen. This both understands and proves the peerless power of the visual image. These are just critic reviews. These are people getting down on their knees and making it lovely. And it's really bizarre when you find a review that is less about the pontificating and actually talks about the makeup of the movie rather than the general situation around it. It seems to be the situation, the setup, the world that everybody else likes. Oh my god, I can see this happening! But when the critics start to look at how it's actually put together, you don't quite get such a positive story. While its premise is an exploration of journalistic integrity, we don't need to explore that. They don't have any. The cost of truth. That's why they don't have any. And the human spirit's resilience. Yet, the film falters, ensnared by underdeveloped characters and a narrative that often strains believability. I really hope by that he doesn't mean California and Texas are on the same side. The potential for a gripping story about bravery and sacrifice is undermined by characters who seem disconnected from the harrowing realities they navigate. Which is a bit weird when they're supposed to be in the world where all this stuff is happening to them. <laughs> I'm separated from my own life. I mean, I've got to be honest, it's impressive that you could do that. Well, this movie could have provided a rich vein of political and social commentary, the film offers little in the way of coherent world building around this divide. Where his extrapolation of current trends is underdeveloped, the film's messaging, aiming for depth and resonance, instead skims the surface, leaving me adrift in a sea of vagueness and ambiguity. Does that, to you, really sound like a film which is worthy of getting 86%? The writing's awful. The characters are useless, and generally, I don't really know what's going on. It's just vague and underdeveloped. Doesn't seem like a particularly well put together movie to me. The script's utilization of characters of color, I wouldn't use that terminology, mate. You wouldn't like the acronym. As conduits for brutality needed to be explored further. Do you mean that they weren't subjected to enough violence? <laughs> I wish you could just hurt them some more. Do you have something to tell me, Deadline? Also, I have a feeling that if they did focus on that, I can't believe they did it to those people. It's disgusting. They were targeted. <laughs> now he's like, no, target them, please. I need more victims. At the end of the day, this is a story of representation, and it matters. By not adequately justifying the narrative choice, the film leaves interpretations open when explanations are warranted. Why can't this movie just tell me what to think about it? I get it. I shouldn't need to be told where the story stands. If you realize that, why are you pissing asking for it? Look, I know I shouldn't be an idiot, but I am. And I feel like the movie should have been made for people like me. But that's what I needed to hear in order 
for that aspect to it. Please, sir. Please, sir. Can you just spell out the movie for me? I know I, sh I know you shouldn't have to. I know you shouldn't have to spell out the movie, but could you? Because I've been brain dead since last Tuesday. This approach raises questions about the intended message and audience. I need to be told what to think. I need to know what you think, so I know who you're talking You're not targeting those bigots, are you? That's what the reviews seem to be saying. We can't judge the movie on objective merit. I need to know, are you hating the people that I want you to? And you're not really saying that we're the same as that scum, are you? That's why Civil War feels like a missed opportunity. The film's execution hampered by thin characterization, lack of looks and narrative, and an over-reliance on spectacle over substance left me disengaged. Because while it attempted to navigate the complexities of war, the film found itself caught in the crossfire, unable to deliver the profound impact it aspires to achieve. All because it didn't pick a side, which seems to be generally determined by who we hate. My side is just, I'm not those people over there. Maybe that's why in this film, when it talks about leading the charge against what remains of the people in charge, if you're feeling triggered, you aren't alone. This movie is a what if nightmare stoked by memories of what happened in January, as if visions of the rioters had been realized. What if this nation had broken? What if the democratic experiment called America had come undone? Dreams really can come true pretty fast too. The way this guy speak, anyone would have thought that they invented the pissing thing. If we fall, everything falls. Because there's not like other countries exist in the world. Is that why he's triggered? It turns out if California disappears, the rest of the world just keeps on ticking and entertainment improves. If that sounds harrowing, you're right. It's one thing when a movie taps into childish fears about monsters under your bed. You're eager to see that happen because you know how it will end. And because it's aimed at kids, you're not still afraid of monsters under your bed. I, I hope. <laughs> It's like, yeah, I'm eager to see what happens because it'll petrify the kids. Adult fears are another matter. I'm sorry, but I'm just not afraid of this movie. <laughs> the British filmmaker explores the unbearable, if not unthinkable, something he likes to do. A pop culture savant. His resume is populated by zombies, clones, and aliens. Seriously, you could have just said he made movies about California. It would have been a lot more succinct. And then we get the projection again. Whatever divisions preceded the conflict are left to your imagination. At least partly because Garland assumes you've been paying attention to recent events. No, I think that's what you assumed. This isn't a movie about, ah, I'm not going to explain anything, because, you know, you've already seen the news. That's why you completely understand why California and Texas are on the same side, stick everybody else. That makes perfect sense, if you've been paying attention to the news. <laughs> Instead, he presents a largely post-ideological landscape where everything, including American exceptionalism, have been rendered moot by war. No. Those things that you think are moot are, why the war pissing started. It's why they're fighting in the first place. Having a reason to fight is very important because otherwise people don't want to fight. This isn't something people wake up and want to do. It's not on their bucket list to do at Disneyland tomorrow. Please sir, can I go to war? Way to set feminism back a few decades. One thing that remains familiar amid these ruins is the movie's old-fashioned faith in journalism. Don't worry about that mate, it's long dead. <laughs> Despite some much needed lulls for you, for the narrative rhythm. In other words, it's boring in parts. Rarely have I seen a movie that made me so acutely uncomfortable. Because that's what people really want to do. They want to get off work, go to the cinema, pay money so that they can feel uncomfortable after a hard day's work. I'm knackered. I'd kill for a bit of discomfort right now. <laughs> but it made me acutely uncomfortable, expressed a nation's soul sickness so vividly that it felt like an x-ray. This movie saw right through me and the heart of this country. It's afraid. It's afraid! I don't know what to say, mate, except go and touch grass. And then we get a review that showcases perhaps the best way to start a review of all time. This imagines America's worst case scenario that's right around the corner. As ordinary citizens take up arms against one another and blood runs in the streets. No, it's not a documentary. Yet. <laughs> It's so dramatic. I mean, look at the picture that they chose. <laughs> also, those doors won't even help you. You want to get behind the engine block. America is in a rough place right now. Perhaps you've heard. Blue versus red. Blind faith versus biased truth. What once was a divide seems like an unbridgeable chasm. No one agrees on simple concepts like facts or reality. And whose fault is that? Is it my fault if you don't know what reality is? Given the urine and the feeling that 
that we're about to reprise a truly contentious contest for the country's highest office. It's hard not to think we're on the brink of a second conflict between our citizens. It can happen here. It can happen again. We do seem to love sequels. This guy genuinely thinks the world is a Marvel movie. That's what this concept is, imagining a not so distant future where you might accidentally mistake it for the present. This is the perfect opportunity to take a cold, hard, genre-inflected look at America slouching towards self-destruction, clearly presenting an authoritarian. He's done things like strikes against citizens, disbanded agencies, and is seeking or already serving his third term in office. The movie assumes you'll see IRL connections immediately. Fill in the blanks yourself and don't need things spelled out. We're back to that projection again, folks. No, that's just what you think the movie wants you to do. You're just already projecting it and you're going, the movie wanted me to do this, I can tell. I can read minds through a screen. <laughs> I mean, it could be that the movie is presenting an objective reality that doesn't exist just to show you what would happen in a war. And you're like, no, it must be real life because there must be somebody I'm supposed to hate. Th these reviews sound like they're coming from lunatics, I gotta say. It's not trying to traffic in specific parallels, despite the fact that you literally just said it wanted you to. It's not coincidence that our tour guides are war photographers and journalists, the exemplars of objectivity. He had to stop at that point of review as he became really uncomfortable all of a sudden, as he realized he shoved his head up his own ass. Makes it remarkably difficult to sit down. Those folks, you know, the ones who act like all politics isn't personal. The ones that look and act just like you and me. Well, they're targets for his rage as much as the leaders. Should you go into civil war looking for jingoism or paranoia, we wish you luck and godspeed. But if you're in the mood for some blunt force jibes at complacency as we suddenly wake up and realize we've got to do something. Completely unhinged, <laughs> just totally unhinged. But to what end? Civil war offers food for thought on the surface, yet you're never quite sure why. No one wants a PSA or easy finger pointing here, except for the fact that you've literally just asked for it again. This is the second person now. <laughs> Look, I know I shouldn't have to ask for the movie to spell it out, but I am because it's what I want. Although I don't want it and I know I shouldn't want it, but I do. As unnerving and nauseating a film about rampant toxic masculinity <laughs> as you'll ever come across. Maybe I need to go and watch that movie. <laughs> it's feeding into a dystopian vision that's already running in our heads. If this guy's car breaks down on the way to work, it's gonna be the final straw and he's gonna turn into the pissing choker. That's how close he seems. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Why does this feel more like the same white noise pitched at a slightly higher frequency? Distraught, paranoid, and complete and utter lunacy. Those are what the reviews are. And even those go, it doesn't go far enough though, does it? If only we could have a bit more. If only it could take my side a bit more. I don't like it's neutral. Look, I know it left a lot of plot also that I can fill the gaps in and then I just assume that the movie wanted me to because I want to. They seem like the ones that gave it an 86% because it doesn't seem like it's got that off its merits. From the reviews when they do talk about characterization, plot or pacing, they all say that they're bad. What people like is the situation. They like the paranoia. They like that, oh, this is what I've always imagined in my head. It's been my dream fantasies. And playing into that is why they like the movie. Except for the ones who didn't like it because it didn't go far enough. Because it didn't spell it out enough for them. Because they needed to know that the movie took their side. That while it was playing neutral, it still didn't mean that the other half of the population were actually allowed to like it as well. And that's why, despite the fact that this got 86% for the critics, uh, when I go to see it, I don't have particularly high hopes. Because, especially being English, I'm not somebody that has that running through my mind 24 hours a day. And quite frankly, I just don't have a dog in the fight. So for me, I can watch the movie and judge it on its merits. And from the extremely little that all the reviews actually spoke about the merits, they don't seem to be good. It got 86% because of the theme, because of the ideas, because it played into the critics' fears. Or dreams, hopes depending which way you look at it. So this one is gonna be interesting because the timing of this movie isn't accidental. And despite everyone going, oh, I think it's neutral, I also get the feeling that it won't be. But for that, we'll have to wait and see. And those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe, more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,